Well, g'day guys, it's Pete here from ETI Music and I've got with me the amazing Simon Hossford. Put it there, bro. Thanks, Pete. Thanks for coming Jeez. out, man. Pleasure. Just uh, up in the beautiful hotel room in the uh, Intercontinental. Indeed. It's a beautiful view of our uh, Torrens. Yes. And they finished the bridge for you just in time. Just in time. Yeah, well, been... we weren't coming unless the bridge was done. Yeah. So we're not here to talk about the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> They've built the bridge, now we're over it. So just, just want to have a chat to you about some simple things, man, and just your, yeah. your playing style, your touring style and mm -hmm. you know the nitty gritties of who you are as a, sure. as a human. Of course. Cool. Yeah. So where did you grow up? Where was your birthplace? Well actually I was born in Perth but I, I didn't grow up there, I grew up in Melbourne. Okay. So Melbourne's kind of. When did you make the move? Uh, I made the, the long arduous trek when I was about six months old. Right. So I really didn't grow up in Perth. Didn't know Perth at all. Have you, you've been back? You've seen... Yeah, you know what's curious um, is that Every time I'm going to Perth, if I'm not thinking about it, you know, I'm just sitting on the plane, um, it always feels like I'm going home, right. which is really quite surreal. Okay. And then I go, oh, I'm not going home, I'm going to Perth. Yeah, right. But maybe there's something subconscious that gets planted yeah. when you're born in a place. Yeah. No doubt. Well, Perth is so excluded from a lot of the other towns around. Mm. You go there to play, obviously, most of the time. Most of the time, yeah. So you've, you've travelled quite a bit. Where was the last time you travelled? Last time I travelled uh, would have been last week, actually. Yeah, where was that? Yeah, that was uh, at Sydney. Okay, yeah. and who was that with? John Stevens. Right, you yeah. do a few shows with him. I've seen you with John. I have, That's yeah, crazy. over the years. Yeah, I've been playing with John on and off now for, uh, you know, probably a good eight yeah. years or so. Yeah, what do you think of his drummer? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> his drummer's <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah, he's crazy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Magic. How about that guy? Yeah. Maybe I'll interview him one day. Indeed. That'll be cool. Being a drummer myself, that'll be that'll be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So the the important things about travelling and as a you know, you're in not just that band, you're in a heap of different bands. You know? mm -hmm. And you're in Adelaide right now for the uh, the International Guitar Festival. Yeah. Why why are you picked to play with these bands? Um that's a good question. And I want and a good of, answer. And of course I don't do the picking, so yeah. I can only sort of, uh, you know, put my my thoughts out there. But I think that with getting picked to play with different bands, especially in a touring capacity where there's travel involved. And so, you know, you're around the same people all the time. Um, it's, I think it's a combination of that you're someone that's easy to get along with. Yeah, um, that's important. Yeah, and that, uh, that you're someone that when it comes to the music and the show itself, they know they don't need to worry about you. The sort of whatever curveballs get thrown on the night, you you can deal with those. And that um, you know, and if it's someone new that you're working with, that you can turn up and they already just kind of know without having to ask that you've got all the stuff under your belt. Yeah, your own, you know. it's, it's your resume is who you've played with in the past. Hmm. That's right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so when you're picked, is it like, okay, I'm a guitarist, but I only really want to work with this person and that person. I haven't worked with that person before. Can you find someone else to take that? That role? Is that do you have that kind of? You mean where you might there might be like an artist that you kind of desire to play with? Yeah. And, um, so if they pick you to play guitar and they pick someone else other than that Johnny guy to yes, play drums, yes. Um, would you go? Nah, nah. I, want, I don't I don't know this guy. I'm not really comfortable in playing mm -hmm. a tour. It might one or two shows and you, you, you cop on the chin. But. Sure. Okay. Well, I think. Look, most of the time I've found that people are happy to take your input yeah. and sometimes of course they'll even ask you, they'll just say, hey, we were thinking of getting this person or that person, what do you think? And um, uh, that's, you know, generally speaking about as far as it extends. Um, if they've already booked someone that you don't normally play with, um, it's, those things are all just part and parcel. Of, yep. the, of the touring kind of machine, you know. Okay. Cool. You've obviously been playing a number of years and you've got the name now. You're getting the phone calls and I've seen you play, obviously, the John Stevens, which is just balls to the ball rock. Mm -hmm. And you've done the Virgil stuff too. Mm -hmm. you now that's. Yeah. How was that? That was great fun. Yeah. And, uh, and I was really fortunate in that that call for me came pretty early. Um, sort of both in my life and in my career. I got asked if I'd like to jam with Virgil initially right. when I was about uh, 18. Jesus. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, that was a no-brainer for me because I'd grown up. How did you get that call though at 18? That, it, that you just had a really good MySpace page or something? Uh, <laughs> no, this was before the days of MySpace and right. Facebook and, and internet. And internet. And, <laughs> no, well, yes, there was internet of course. But it was the days where p pictures would scroll down your screen at yeah. like one pixel at a yeah, time. Yeah, right. But um, I think like with most things in the music industry, it's, it's 
there's two halves to the equation. Now, one is definitely who you know. Mm -hmm. um, and that, for example, to get back to your question, that call with Virgil came through, certainly through people I know that I'd already met. But I also do believe that the reason that you meet these people and know them is because you put the time into your instrument already. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, uh, Phil Tercio, who's mm -hmm. the keyboard player on The Verge, mm -hmm. um, I'd already started doing some jamming and stuff with him. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I guess had I not spent my whole childhood practicing, I would never have been jamming with him in the first place. Yeah. So, where in essence you can say, well, the call came through Phil, which is someone that I know, yeah. so it's who you know. Yeah. But you put yourself with those people that you know. So, Phil was contacted and said, hey, we want to do this thing, do you know someone? That's right. Um, Virgil had contacted Phil and was looking to put a new outfit together yep. and asked Phil if he was interested, which he was. Mm. And, um, and uh, Phil knew that I had been listening to Virgil on loose change records and stuff like that right. since so I was you were about down 14. With, you were down with not knowing how to count anywhere near <laughs> four. Yeah, I, I had a problem with never knowing where the one was and that worked perfectly. Nice. But, um, so Just keep going until you get a look. That's and right, then you're keep like... going until someone nods you into the next section. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and so, you know, it started off as a jam, obviously Virgil wanted to feel us out, yeah. and, uh, and he really liked the, the little group that was put together, and so On The Verge started from that. Very cool. Mm. That was cool, and that was a good show, you know, the, the, the drum scene, or the Ultimate Drummers Weekend. Ah, uh, yes. Have you seen the footage of it? Yes, yeah. I have indeed. Right. It's the uh, our 12 year reunion gig. Not, not a practice between leaving and starting, it was just like a couple of get-togethers. Oh yeah, it was, uh, we hadn't played together for the whole 12 years. Right. And uh, we had two rehearsals and then uh, three warm-up gigs in different cities. That's insane. And uh, yeah, it felt pretty insane at the time, but yeah. that's all we, we got because of all of our schedules. Yep. Yeah, man. Well, that's... They, they, you want someone to do the job, pick someone that's busy, they say, you know, or whatever, say whatever, that. whatever the saying is, you know. Yeah. If you want something done, person. pick a busy guy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're busy for a reason. Yeah. All right, cool, so. man. So, growing up, moving out of Perth, uh -huh. um, so Melbourne is obviously a better place to go for music. You didn't have the choice because you were six months when you went. That's right. Where would you live if you had a choice? In Australia, in Australia or in the yeah. world? Australia. Australia. Now. Music Look, wise. You know, or coffee or yeah. pasta. Yeah, there's, there's so many facets to it, isn't there? Look, I think really that um, Melbourne is, uh, you know, I was just lucky that I grew up there, but I mean, I've had many opportunities to move if I really wanted to, yeah. which we all do, you know? I mean, if, um, you know, occasionally I thought about moving to Sydney, mm. but really I, at the end of the day, to me, it's swapping an apple with an orange, but if yeah. you're perfectly happy with the apple. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, Melbourne's close to, to a lot of things, except for Perth. That's right. You know, it's kind of right in the middle. And you do a lot of gigs in Sydney. Not too many in Adelaide, I would think. Some, yeah. but not as many as Sydney, that's right. And, uh, you know, obviously some in Brisbane and wherever else. But, so Melbourne's pretty good and it's got a good music scene and good coffee and all those yeah. other things that you mentioned. Yeah, yeah cool, cool. Yeah. Um, do you play any other instruments? Is it just guitar? No, I play bass right. as well. Yes, I've seen you. You played bass in... The John Stevens gig once. I do. Yeah. I do about 50% of the time or right. so play bass with yeah. John. And, uh, and But I grew up playing bass. I played double bass in the school orchestra right. for four years. Wow. And, and, uh, Is that where you started on bass? And went, I need more strings. I did actually yeah. start in bass, uh, on bass in high school, yeah. And, um, and I played electric bass in the, in the jazz big band. Right. And that was at the time because the school I went to, they didn't offer any spots in their music program for guitar. Right. So that to me was like the next obvious thing. You know, and I can hack away at, at piano just to... Enough to be able to write a song. Yeah. You know. Okay. Have you written any songs? Written any albums? Uh, not of my own. Not as called Simon Hosford. But okay. what I normally do is write songs and give them to my publisher. Okay. And then they so farm them out, find artists for them. And anyone that we know would have played any of your tracks? Yeah, sure. Shannon Knoll uh, yeah. on his first record, I did a track, and um, uh, let me think, Rob Mills as well. Yeah. Did did a couple of songs on his uh, record. And I had a good relationship with Sony, and Sony tend to deal with yeah. a lot of the, the ex idol people yeah, and yeah. X Factor and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that sort of comes up from time to time. Had a single on the radio with a girl called Tali. Okay. Um, way back when. So yeah, bits and pieces. Nice. That's good. And how does it make you feel when your own stuff is on the radio? That's a pretty good feeling, yeah. I have to say. Yeah. Um, there's. It's sort of it's a completely different feeling to when you're playing guitar in front of an audience and they're appreciating what you do. That feels yeah. great. Yeah. 
Um, but you know, when you turn on the radio in your car or something mm. and you hear a song that you wrote the words to, yep. that's... Or you're shopping, you're in the 7-Eleven yeah, yeah. and you're pushing your trolley and your song comes on the radio, you go to the, the dude or the chick behind it, that's me on the radio, just so you know. That's right. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I know people don't, they're a bit weird when you tell them though, but yep. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. They're weird or you're weird. Yeah. Oh, there we are. I'm happy to tell them. <laughs> but, um, no, it's a, it's a great feeling actually, quite surreal type yeah. feeling. Yeah. So at what point did you go, right, guitar is, is my thing now? Or guitar is obviously your prominent It is, yeah. weapon um, of choice. It seemed really obvious to me from when I was pretty young yeah. actually. I think I knew, I really had a strong feeling by the time I was finishing primary school, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, that that's what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, and that's why I ended up going to a high school that had a, a good music program mm -hmm. in Victoria and ended up playing you know, bass in the orchestra and, yep. and all that stuff. So yeah, pretty young. Okay, cool. Um, what's your favourite guitar experience? Hmm. Favourite guitar experience? You know, the best, buying a new guitar or being endorsed or biggest gig you've done? I have to say... Accomplishing a tone or playing the right chord? I can answer that maybe in two halves if you like. Right. As far as one of the, like, you know, a very memorable gig is um, when I was young, I was about 21 and was um, touring with Men at Work over in South America. Right. And they had sold a lot of records there, but in, they never toured there in the 80s. Right. So that, for them, was like a first tour. And uh, and so the crowds were huge. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> the hysteria around it was out of control. I mean, people were camping out literally overnight in hotel yeah, lobbies. Right. Just to get a sneak of the band. Um, and because we did a few TV promos and stuff, of course, that, uh, you know, it was weird for me because I wasn't in the original Men at Work, but just walking around and people recognizing you yeah. and pointing and stuff, I was like, wow, okay. But we used to do some shows like in Sao Paulo and Rio that were to 10,000 people. Wow. And, um, That's crazy. And all screaming, you know, and <laughs> things being thrown on the stage and not vegetables, which was good. <laughs> or undies. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but lots of other softer things being thrown on the stage. And right. so, you know, for me as a, as a 21 year old, yes. I thought this is- And that locked you in? That, yeah. Yep. If there was any doubt up until that point, which there wasn't, but if there was, that definitely would have locked me in. Yeah. Um, and you know, you mentioned something else about like a, a new guitar you get or something. A really special experience is when you're, you're lucky enough to have a respected company. And, and I play mates on guitars at the moment. Mm -hmm that um, when they build you something exactly the way that and that's you what would like it. Yeah, and they've done that a few times for me now and it's right. fantastic. I mean, that's a that's a great They've feeling. done it a few times because they haven't got it right the first time or, <laughs> or, or you've changed a little, you've no, changed the style. Just, just some different models yeah. actually. Um, and each one kind of has its has its own strength, okay. you know, different to the others. But, um, but that feeling of driving down to their factory knowing yeah. that you know, the Thanks. unveiling of something that, you know, 10 different people there have all helped work on um, and to to your the, liking. They're called basically. the Hoss Maiden or the, the Maiden Hoss? Or no, they're just, generally they're just called my initials actually, yeah, the right. SLH models. Nice. Yeah, so mean, that's, that's a good feeling too. That's pretty good. So mm. I've, I've been fortunate enough or unfortunate enough to be endorsed by a company and I, the, the relationship wasn't there. Yep. The gear was great, sound was great, the... The, but there was, just, there was no relationship and I yeah. think that's important it's really Cause important. you're representing their company and they're representing you as a person absolutely so, yeah and that's that I made the decision not to renew because there was no relationship yeah look I think that um, I mean there are obviously a lot of good companies out there uh, building good products so to me mm. anyone that I'd be interested in of course it goes without saying the product has to be good as a base yeah um, but after that it is it's all just dealing with other human beings, oh, yeah. it? people. So that relationship's got to be strong. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we're all about education. Inspiration is, is the name of the company. Yep. So who was your primary educator? And when you were eighteen or twenty-one and got that phone call, yeah. Who was the person that was teaching you then? Was did you ever have a teacher, or were you just like a guitar teacher? Yeah. Yeah, I did. Um, I had a fantastic guitar teacher when I was really young. Um, and for a long time, from the ages of about 6 to 13, I had the one guitar teacher. Right. And his six. name was Ron Longmore and um, okay. a great teacher and I learned a lot from him. And then when I was about 13... Uh, What's Ron doing now though? He's still teaching. Yeah, okay, good. yeah he's still teaching the kids and, and you know, they're loving it. And, uh, awesome. And 
he was really good because he gave me a, a real broad palette um, to of exposure, yep. basically, you know, different things that he would show me and teach me, and nothing was off limits. I mean, even though he played great classical guitar, mm -hmm. and so he would teach me that. If there was some like sort of rocky thing that he thought that I would like you, then he would teach yeah. me that. Well, if you can play the hard stuff really well, you can play the easy stuff extremely well. That's right. So if he can teach you how to get around the fretboard classically, that's right. You know exactly. When he gets down to the rock side, it's a different kettle of fish. Mm. But you know, you've got the basics. Yeah, and then after that, um, he did a most humble thing, and he uh, he took me aside one day and he said, "Look." Honestly, I think that as much as I'm happy to just keep teaching you, yeah, yeah. you're going to benefit more now at this stage from um, me putting you with some other people mm -hmm. that can give you some things that aren't my strengths. Yeah. Um, and that was a great that was a great thing that he did. And um, but anyway, we're still friends to this day. Right. Good. And good. Uh, and so he was sort of a mentor of mine. I guess, nice. I guess you might say. And uh, and after that. Really, I went with like lots of different teachers, but for smaller periods of time, okay. not for years on end. Um, and then he gave me a great grounding so that I could actually then begin to teach myself. Yeah, and know what to look for, know who to find. Exactly. Good. And and you know find books and. Um, That's when your own personality comes into your playing. I think so. Mm. Yeah, and you know you know picking up things by ear on the radio and yeah. copying them and imitating. Um, so I think they're all valuable skills too to be able to teach yourself. And who, yourself. We, who are we listening to at that point, apart from On The Verge? What other, what other music, just quickly? <laughs> well, yeah, what, at about the point when I was 13 or whatever? Yeah, yeah. Um, there was no One Direction around then? No, there was no One Direction. <laughs> uh, it was actually my guitar teacher, Ron, who a student of his, another student of course, um, had given him a mixtape of sort of what they considered the best of Eddie Van Halen, right, okay. right from the first record in 1978. Right. Okay. Um, up until about 1985, which is, I guess, around then, which feels weird to say. But uh, and I heard that he said, "Look, 1985." You said, "Did you say?" About 1985. Yeah. I so was I was five <laughs> at that point. <laughs> and I was yeah, not that much older, 12, 12, 13. Yeah. Great. Anyway, um, so he just knew straight away. You yeah. know, he he said, "This you have to hear," and um, and I listened to that thing until I wore all the iron filings out of the tape. Nice. Yeah. Good. That's, I still got that tape in a box somewhere, and um, but yeah, that really changed everything for me. That, cool. that was like an inspiration. Nice. So that's the education and the inspiration all in one. Mm. So okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. So who would you like to get a phone call from? Um, I know some people. You could make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Who would I like to get a phone call from? Uh, Megan Fox, does she okay. care? <laughs> sure, why not? Um, musically, preferably, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a family show. Dave Grohl, yeah, 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 that'd be cool. I think uh, there's just something about that guy that I have always admired and loved, and um, uh, you know, I, I really respect and admire everything that he's done musically. He's an incredible musician. Man, and he's been around for years. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and that's not easy to do. To, to hold people's interest for that long doing something that you still love, yep. you know. Um, but also, he seems like a fantastic guy. I think that would be a really fun phone call. Okay. All right, so we've talked about, slightly we touched on why you are picked, why you are picked to be the band member. Mm -hmm. And so just in a couple of words, what would you... What would you say to a young student or a young musician to help them get in a band? So the playing's good. Okay. How can you help them as a person? What would you say to right to get them in a gig? Okay. Sort um, yourself out. So the, assuming the playing is kind of already yep. there, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, I would say that um, being humble mm. and having good people skills is absolutely something that makes other people want to call you. Yeah. Well, I called you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. And I, in spite of my people skills and <laughs> humility, but, uh, or lack thereof. No, um, so I think that's a big part of it. I also think being, assuming that you have the ability, but then for whatever the gig is, yeah. um, you know, if it's a matter of just being punctual and just turning up the things on time, 
um, learning the songs yeah. that you have to learn so that you're not mucking other people around. Mm -hmm. They they kind of seem like really obvious things. Yeah. Probably but sometimes to a lot they're of people, not. But they're, honestly, yeah. they're not. And you, you yep. see it all the time, even with uh, older musicians. Yeah. Well, I'm awesome. I'm awesome because I can do this really fast. You have to pay me lots of money and pick yeah. up my bags for me. And That's right. Yeah. And, uh, and it's all about them instead of all about a team. Mm. I think that anyone that is a team player and respects other people's time and abilities, yeah, you got you. It's you can't lose if you've got those qualities. Yeah, I think. So there's no can... iron team. There's right. always a drummer. There's no... <laughs> Finally, if you're if you're able to implement one thing, yeah, into the music industry, what would it be to make it better? Wow, not yeah. not Megan Fox. Not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just think that um, to leave any kind of legacy or thing behind, whether that's, you know, recorded material like songs mm -hmm. or a, a record or, um, or that, you've, that you've generally made people happy, yeah. I think that if you can leave that behind as your legacy, then that's a success. Excellent. I think that's the main drive. Yeah. When it stops being about, because when you're young, it's about you. Mm. It's about, I want to be really good. I want to get this gig. I, and then as you get older, you realize that the gift of music is more about them, mm -hmm. what you yeah. can do for them. And I think that if you do that, you can't lose. Good. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Pete. Excellent. Excellent. Make sure you check out more interviews, etimusic.com. Thank you very much.